Well, good morning. A uh, bunch of good talks so far. Um, uh, my name is Wyatt West. Uh, I find myself at the end of the alphabet. They did not save the best for last. That's my disclosure for this talk. Um, and uh, just a little bit about myself. I'm one of the local yokels. Uh, graduated high school uh, from Morgan High, uh, just up the canyon. Uh, went to Weber State, then the University of Utah, now back here to train. And uh, I'm going full circle this July and going back to practice in Morgan. Um, I'm hoping that my circle was wide enough and long enough that enough people have forgotten what all the things I did in high school to, uh, to have some confidence in me when I get there. Um, but I've uh, been uh, appreciative of my uh, training here at McKady Hospital. Um, it's a great program. Uh, I've had a lot of good experiences. One of the things that I've taken uh, most interest in is uh, the area of sports medicine, um, specifically non-operative orthopedics. And uh, one of the tools in sports medicine that has been that is being increasingly used is musculoskeletal ultrasound. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about musculoskeletal ultrasound and uh, its potential use in the primary care setting. Uh, no disclosures, wish I had some, uh, so maybe someday in the future. Um, as far as my objectives for this talk, uh, first of all, I wanted to talk about, briefly about ultrasound technology itself and its application to medicine discuss uh, some of the benefits that can be found uh, on the diagnostic side with uh, uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound, uh, talk about a, li a little bit about the procedures that we do under ultrasound, and then the economics briefly, uh, because this is a billable service. So first of all, ultrasound and medicine, just a brief overview, overview of what ultrasound technology is. Uh, this is an old technology. It was, uh, stems mostly from uh, sonar technology that was used on uh, World War II naval vessels. Basically, you have a transducer that produces a sound wave. This travels through tissues and then is reflected back to the transducer based on the density of, uh, or in uh, the impedance in ultrasound talk of the um, the density of that tissue. And then the computer is able to generate uh, a, an image based on different echo uh, intensities. Uh, ultrasound is not new in medicine. It's been used for decades, uh, quite widely. It's, it's used in radiology extensively, cardiology, uh, obstetrics and, OB, uh, and gynecology. This is one of the most famous uses. Everybody's excited to go to the doctor for their, uh, during their pregnancy and find out the gender of their baby. Uh, emergency medicine, they use it, and then increasingly here in the United States, although it's been used widely in Europe and Australia and other places, uh, in rheumatology and orthopedics. Just a little aside about musculoskeletal me medicine in general in the primary care setting. Uh, about 20% of primary care visits are for a musculoskeletal or orthopedic complaint. 90% of these uh, are thought to be non-operative, meaning uh, many of these we could take care of in the primary care setting uh, ourselves. Uh, diagnosis is based on basically three factors. One, taking a good history with the mechanism of injury. This can lump people into categories. Uh, and then doing a good physical exam. This is one of the areas of medicine where physical exam skills is very, still very important. And then using imaging to really hone down on your diagnosis. Now with imaging comes two unfortunate side effects, increased cost of care, and exposure to radiation. And we'll address these issues uh, as we talk about ultrasound and its potential use. Uh, using ultrasound in a primary care setting has potential advantages and disadvantages. Uh, it, uh, some of the advantages are it gives us a better diagnostic ability uh, and maybe decreasing inappropriate referrals to uh, the orthopedic specialist uh, and saving more appropriate referrals uh, that are more likely to result in a surgery. Um, there's no radiation exposure when, with ultrasound, and that's one of the biggest benefits. Relatively compared to other modalities of imaging, there is a low cost to ultrasound, and we'll go specifically over the numbers. Uh, uh, whenever uh, an ultrasound is placed on a patient, there's an increased perception of patient satisfaction. Uh, this is played out in multiple studies. And the real question is, is 
with musculoskeletal ultrasound, do you get better clinical outcomes? And potentially, yes, and we'll talk about the research that has to do with that. Some of the disadvantages, of course, the initial investment to buy an ultrasound machine is quite expensive, and we'll go over that cost. Uh, there is an increased cost to the patient and to the system. This is a billable service, both for the diagnostic fees and also to use uh, uh, doing injections. Um, there, uh, one of the big disadvantages, I think, is the increased time it takes to set up the ultrasound and use it in a procedure. One study estimated this time about doubles the time of the procedure. And uh, there is a little controversy regarding is, are the clinical outcomes better? And we'll talk about it. So uh, diagnostic ability of ultrasound. I think that the diagnostic advantage with ultrasound uh, over other imaging modalities is the fact that the images are dynamic. They're not a static picture. You can see the tendons moving uh, under the ultrasound, and uh, this can improve your ability to make an accurate diagnosis. Uh, it is a relatively low cost. To ultrasound an extremity, it costs between $30 and $115, depending on the degree of uh, completeness that you do. Uh, this is about the same price or a little cheaper as a plain x-ray. And then once again, there's no radiation exposure in this modality. There have been several groups that have compared ultrasound uh, to other imaging modalities, specifically MRI, but it's also been done for X-ray and, and CT. Uh, there, this group, um, uh, TIFI, uh, back in 2000, what the, the, it was an orthopedic group. What they did is they took 100 patients with shoulder pain and suspected rotator cuff uh, tears. They randomized them into two groups. On one group, they performed ultrasound to diagnose the uh, rotator cuff tear that they suspected. The other group, they did an MRI, and then they compared all of them uh, to the gold standard, which they w thought was going to be arthroscopy. So they took them all to arthroscopy. What they found was that the ultrasound group accurately diagnosed the rotator cuff tears 94 to 96% of the time compared with 92 to 97% of MRI. So basically their statistical analysis says it's equivalent. Uh, similar, similarly, other groups have found uh, findings that, that this is just as good as MRI to diagnose meniscal pathology in knees. Uh, lastly, with more superficial tendons uh, and uh, fascial injuries, uh, MRI can, or I mean, ultrasound can be more uh, uh, accurate than MRI, uh, specifically Achille, Achilles tendonitis and plantar fasciitis. So now looking at the therapeutic aspect of ultrasound, how, wh what do we use it in? It's mostly in joint injections, and that's what we'll talk about. Uh, just a quick overview of joint injections for painful joints. Uh, steroids have long been a mainstay of uh, relieving pain in uh, painful joints. Uh, this is uh, pretty widely accepted. However, the, there has been questions regarding the uh, variability in outcomes. Some patients tend to respond well to steroid injections and some patients don't. And there are a lot of theories as to why that is. Uh, one of those is that maybe it has to do with the accuracy of the injection. Are we actually getting the steroid into the joint? Um, There we go. Uh, several groups have looked at this uh, by, by using either cadavers or by injecting uh, contrast and then taking x-rays after the joint injection was uh, performed. And what they found is that even among experienced orthopedists and rheumatologists, uh, there is uh, accurate, actu actually quite, well, joint injections actually are quite uh, inaccurate. Uh, as many as 30% of knee injections were extra articular, uh, half of all wrist injections were found to be extra articular, and 75%, three quarters of glenohumeral shoulder joint injections were extra articular. Uh, when done under ultrasound guidance, other studies have shown that that accuracy improves to 96 to 100%, so markedly better. Uh, this is especially true in small joints in the hands and the feet, and, uh, and important in areas where we do injections around uh, important nerves and vessels, such as carpal tunnel or hip injections. 
but does it make a clinical difference? And that's really the question. Um, uh, Sibbet uh, and, and another orthopedic group did a study, or I mean, excuse me, a rheumatologic group, did a study uh, of 150 patients at three different centers, one in Albuquerque, New Mexico, one up in Helena, Montana, and then New York City. And what they did is they randomized these patients with uh, painful joints uh, to two different groups, uh, one that would be done under landmark guided uh, or landmark guided injections and the other group uh, received ultrasound guided injections. And what they found was that post-procedure, well, that with that procedural pain uh, in these groups was significantly decreased in the uh, ultrasound guided uh, injection than in the, um, than in the non-ultrasound guided injection, the landmark guided injection. 60% uh, uh, reduction in significant pain and 45% reduction overall. Uh, when that was extended a little bit longer to two, to two weeks post-injection and six weeks post-injection, they found similar results that absolute pain in the ultrasound group decreased by 60% and that um, non-responder rates decreased from 60% all the way down to 10% in the ultrasound guided injections, possibly indicating that these, the, the accuracy ha does affect the clinical outcome. Lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the economics of ultrasound. It's a billable service, and so it costs money. Um, first of all, I've uh, looked into getting an ultrasound machine in my own clinic, and I got a quote. And it uh, turns out that for a standard uh, computer and couple transducers, printer package, the stand, the cables, a warranty, uh, the, the, this would set me back about $35,000. Uh, so it's a significant upfront cost, uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm not going to get one yet. <laughs> um, but it is a billable service, and so it's a, a cost that can be reimbursed. Or, um, yeah, reimbursed. Um, to put an ultrasound onto an extremity when you do an injection. Of course, you get reimbursed for doing the actual injection and then also for the medications that are used. But to use an ultrasound, uh, according to 2012 Medicare guidelines, uh, that billable service is about $200, uh, 33 of which go to the physician. Uh, to do an, uh, a diagnostic test on um, a joint or an extremity, if you do a comprehensive exam, which has a whole bunch of criteria, which we won't go into, uh, you can bill $115 for that, and about $30 goes to the physician. To do a limited exam, which would probably be the, be the majority of these exams, uh, it bills about $30, 20 of which goes to the physician. So the costs can be made up uh, to that initial investment. And they're still fairly inexpensive compared to other modalities, such as MRI, which is going to be in the uh, area of thousands. Real quick, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, the costs of doing one of these injections in your office versus referring one of these, uh, a hip injection specifically, to a radiology suite to be done uh, under fluoroscopy. Uh, ultrasound guided injections, about $400. Uh, the facility fee was $300 and the physician, re, uh, the physician billing was about $100. Uh, as, a, as opposed to fluoroscopically guided, uh, this is at McKay Hospital specifically. I called up their department and got the exact price. Um, the physician fee is, is, is the same as the, um, as the physician fee for the ultrasound, but the facility fee is much more costly. It's $850, making a $550 savings to do this in the office. So just in summary, uh, ultrasounds, they, they have potential to be used in the primary care setting. They have a broad application. Uh, they're improved diagnostics. They've been shown uh, probably in small studies, but reproducibly, uh, to improve clinical outcomes. And overall, I think it's a cost-effective uh, way to go. So that is my talk. Thank you.